Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today I'm back with another episode of Road to Rank, where I climb the Online Series 10 ladder and provide live commentary as I go. Today we are using another team by none other than 2017 World Champion Ryota Otsubo, who you all know is one of my favorite players and team builders, especially in Sword and Shield. In fact, someone made this meme a couple of weeks ago and tagged me on Twitter, and I thought it was hilarious and honestly super, super accurate. So yeah. We're using yet another team creation by Ryota, and this one was actually for the 25th Invitational Anniversary Tournament. Uh, I won't spoil the results of it. Day one just took place. Day two is tomorrow. It's a pre-recorded tournament. Uh, but yeah, this was the team that Ryota brought to the event. You can check out the VODs at twitch.tv slash Pokemon, and then the stream goes live at 9 a.m. Pacific tomorrow for uh, Championship Sunday. So yeah, uh, it's a really, really fun tournament. would highly recommend you watch it, uh, and if you can't catch it live, definitely check out the VODs. I might do some VOD analyses on the channel as well, uh, just because, yeah, the, the level of play is just immaculate, right? It's literally the best players of all time uh, in the game. So would highly, highly recommend it. But uh, Ryota brought a really interesting team, very hyper offensive with Life Orb, Calyrex, Choice Scarf, Indidi, Male. Super, super cool tech that you don't see very frequently. Psychic Seed, Stack Attack, uh, the support Mianxia with the Fake Out Wide Guard, as well as Close Combat and Knockoff, Akaberry Protect, Whimsicott, and Citrus Offensive Arcanine. So as you can see, this team has a ton of damage output. There's a lot of anti Xerneas specifically. Uh, knockoff from Yanshou can get rid of the power herb. Trick from Choice Scarf can get rid of the power herb. Psychic Seed on Stack Attack means you can take the uh, Dazzling Gleams or Moonblast a little bit better. And then you have Arcanine for a Fairy Resist as well. Now this team is very fast paced, right? The game can actually often be decided on turns one and two of the game if you have like an outstanding start to the match. And so a lot of it is being able to play fast paced and really just snowball from there. And if you want to watch, you know, the master at work, once again, go check out Ryota. Not only uh, does he, is he competing in the 25th Invitational, but he also has a YouTube channel and is really just criminally underrated. Like, he, he does streams occasionally with the brand new teams that he makes. So please give him a sub. I've linked his Twitter and his YouTube down in the description below. And yeah, let's just get started. Thanks so much as always for watching Road to Rank. If you enjoy, please share your support by leaving a like on the video. I really appreciate it. And question of the day, I want to know if you tuned into day one of the stream. If so, what did you think? Which matches did you enjoy the most? Which teams did you enjoy the most? Let me know in the comment section below. Of course, Ryota was one of my favorite team builders and players from the event, so he is definitely one of my answers. Uh, but I was also really impressed by Santino Tarquinio and his, uh, you know, just his overall team and play uh, in day one. So check him out. So let's get started. Uh, as you can see, uh, first of all, I'm posting this video pretty late because I just had a really bad losing streak earlier today and I tried out three different teams and like nothing was clicking for me. So I was like, I need to step away from the game for a little bit and take a break. And so, yeah, uh, I'll talk about that a little bit more after this match is over. But the main thing is that Pokemon's a tough game. It's very easy to tilt and it's really easy to go on bad losing streaks. Happens to the best of us. And yeah, like it's just the element of the game, right? So... Unfortunately, like, the best way to deal with it often, I feel like, is to just, like, take a break. Uh, and so I've left for a couple of hours, now I'm back, but still wanted to keep up with the daily content, try to get a video up before the night ended. So, yeah. Uh, okay, they have Calyrex, but they also have Tornadus. Well, this is interesting, right? Because my Mianchel does have Wide Guard as well as Fake Out. So I actually like Mianchel plus Indidi as a lead here a lot, because they don't have great Psychic Resist, and this Indidi can Shadow Ball them. Calyrex in the back. I mean, I have my Tailwind with Whimsicott, so we can just trade Tailwinds and then go from there. Arcanine's pretty useless with Intimidate, because they have two Inner Focus users. Ah, Stack's interesting, but they do have Land Alive. Alright, I'll bring Whimsicott in the back. This game is probably going to end in, like, four turns if I had to guess. It's just so fast-paced. Neither of us have good switch-ins. But I think Indy actually helps us, especially with that Choice Scarf. And normally, you don't really want to lead Indy on Mianxiao, because obviously the terrain cancels out that Fake Out turn 1. But Fake Out still works against Tornadus and Landers Incarnate here, because but neither of them are grounded. So they're going to go with the Lecky plus the Calyrex. Okay. Now... Typically in this position, you'll probably anticipate Shadow Ball. I have Wide Guard. If I'm my opponent, I would Volt Switch into NDD, like to bring out Tornadus, and then protect with Calyrex. I, mean, I also have Knockoff on this thing, right? So Calyrex, I have two things I can one-shot Calyrex right now. Uh, 
Oh, wow, this is such an interesting turn one to start. I guess you could also just Electro Whip and Expanding Force, but to not respect Wide Guard would be really risky here. Okay, I'm gonna go for Knock Off. Uh, I'm still gonna go for Shadow Ball here, I think. Yep, they do go for Volt Switch. They didn't protect Calyrex, though. Crits us, but we survive. Okay. Uh, I don't love the crit, but that's okay. I would guess his Tornado is coming out right now. I'm curious what Calyrex is going for. That's Landris. Okay. I don't mind getting rid of a Life Orb. That's pretty sweet. Oh, we're just faster, right? Yeah, we're just Scarfed. Nice. <laughs> that's the beauty of uh, Calyrex. Er, oh, that doesn't KO. What? <laughs> Yeah, that is not how I expected turn one to play out. And we get a crit onto Lando. Hey, I, like I said, I expected this game to end relatively quickly. Uh, but that is wild. If you're in prison, it's probably sh Astro Barrage, Expanding Force, and Prison Protect. I mean, it's a, clearly a bulky Calyrex, which you don't see very frequently. I don't think Shadow Ball KOs this. But I have Tailwind support in the back, which is obviously great. I think the play I want to make here is to actually wide guard and then switch NDD out. Because at this point, if I set up a Tailwind, switching in Whimsicott's a little bit risky because I'm not focus ashed on this thing. So they, they pan potentially knock us out, but I'm guessing Calyrex is expanding force, uh, Astral Barrage, and Prism Protect. So, like, if I get Tailwind up here, we should just win the game with NDD. Okay, they do have Psy Shock. They target Mian Shao, though. That's fine. Like, if you're knocking Mian Shao, that would actually be perfect. Because then I just bring in Calyrex and Tailwind Astral Barrage. Okay, perfect. And the Earth Power. Nice. Okay. Fantastic. Because the main thing here is now I get Tailwind. Now, oh my gosh, that's three crits in three turns. That's wild. Uh, Psy Shock. Maybe they have Protect, but it's fine. I'm just going to knock off into this and then tailwind right now actually protect is an acceptable play i think it's just how do they be do they have um priority on their team they don't have a rillaboom they have entei which has e-speed and there's still three turns of psychic terrain but they also don't have any ghost resists so i'm down to yeah knock off into calyrex here and protect to give me an extra turn of tailwind to work with Uh, like, I basically sacrificed Mian Shao for his free switching into Calyrex, to which then I can just tail an Astral Barrage. They protect Lando, that's fine. Oh, that is just really slow. What is the item? Oh, it's Focus Ash, wow. Pretty impressive that it survived Shadow Ball turn 1, TBH. Like, I wonder what the role was on that. Either way, they bring in a Lecky, fine by me. Um, now we can Tailwind. That's why I wanted to stagger the Tailwind. And I'm just going to close combat a Lecky here. I guess the one downside, though, is that I didn't time my Psychic Terrain super well because I am going... It's going to expire, uh, not after this turn, but next turn. But close combat should bring... Well, Lecky's not Sash, actually. It might just one-shot. That would be incredible if it does. Okay, nice. Now we're faster. Close combat comes out. Oof! It's funny, I think I called Mianxiao a support Pokemon when I was covering the team, but this thing packs a lot of damage. So, that was super sweet. Nice, Sludge Bomb. I think the one scary turn in this game was that um, my opponent went for Earth Power when I switched in Whimsicott, but Sludge Bomb was actually a really uh, free opportunity for them there, and had they gone for that, I wouldn't have gotten Tailwind up, and this would have been a more difficult game. Uh, this also means I actually get Terrain Control, because I can just protect Calyrex, sack Mianxiao, get the last Pokemon in, or get NED in, and then, yeah. So the crit turn one was really scary. My heart definitely dropped a little bit uh, when that came out. Perfect, Entei's the last one. Now, Scarf Entei is one thing to consider, but one play we can make here that's really safe is to just protect Calyrex and knock off into Entei. Three turns of Tailwind, yeah. I think this is super safe. Wait, I'm just double checking. It is the last one of terrain, right? Yes, 
want to confirm that. No reason not to take your time. One thing that I realized, like, I don't do super well is to double check the field state every turn, mainly because I'm sometimes just a little bit impatient. But, you know, in Sword and Shield, you have access to all the information, so why not, right? Lando protects, perfect. I just want to knock off here because, like, there's no downside to this play, right? Uh, I remove the item, and now I just guarantee uh, Terrain is going to be up for the remainder of the game. Perfect. And they go for Crunch. So, what we can do now is just swap the Mian Shell out into... Actually, I don't even need to swap it out, do I? If you extreme speed uh, into this, well, you're not KOing me. I, I think like close combat plus uh, Astral Barrage works here because we know that the uh, Entei can't protect right now. We have Tailwind. If you E-speed, well, Astral Barrage KOs your Lando Eye anyway. Yeah, they go for the double, but I wanted to cover for that double. I think the one way we could have lost is if we switched Mianshaw out into the Indy and then we don't KO the Entei. No, oh, Astral Barrage just finishes it off anyway. Sweet. So knock off. I mean, Mianchal was actually the MVP of this one, it almost feels like. As well as Calyrex, I should give it credit as well. But Mianchal put in so much work, uh, one-shotting Regieleki, removing Lando's item, removing Entei's item, and just setting up the team for success. Really surprised that they didn't bring the Tornadus in this matchup. I figured, like, them being able to get uh, control of the speed was really going to be crucial for them. Mm, but, yeah, I'm mean, happy not to see that because in a matchup where you're both using fast Pokemon, whoever outpaces the opposing side you know, we'll often have a significant advantage. <laughs> 2001 is a cool number. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the main thing about that one is that we managed to have more speed control, right? The Imprison was basically completely negated on turn one, so that was pretty nice. But the, the switch that I made was, like, a little bit risky, so I'm not sure I'm in love with that play. Cali Ice here with Mimikyu, okay. Um, if you're my opponent and you want to set up Trick Room, you should just go... Actually, you could go Rillaboom Mimikyu. Rillaboom Mimikyu. Calyrex Ice. They don't have Imprison. Like, I don't think we bring Whimsicott out here. I think it's Calyrex, NDD, Stack Attack, and Arcanine, but I don't know in what order right now. Mianchal's actually interesting because it does have Wide Guard for Glacial Lances. I think I'm willing to just go NDD plus Calyrex. Actually, Incineroar gives me some trouble with that. Indity Calyrex, if they lead Insin, I can switch in Arcanine. Alright, Indity Calyrex, Arcanine plus Stack Attack. Uh. The thing I don't love here is that well, Trick Room is a pretty, <laughs> no pun intended, or maybe pun intended, tricky matchup. And I can't hard deny it here, and they have a, like, I can deny Trick Room, but then the thing is I'd probably be trading my Calyrex. If they go Insin plus Mimikyu, you can just go for a Dark type attack and Trick Room on turn one. Yeah, that's the lead. Uh, okay. I mean, the play I could make here... The play I could make is to switch Calyrex out into Stack Attacka. It's just basically a question of, like, do I deny you your Trick Room? Because I could go Expanding Force Astral Barrage. And then Trick Room's denied, but then I'm choice locked with NDD into Expanding Force. I do have Arcanine and Stack Attack on the back, though. Both of those are pretty good for us. So honestly, in this position, I feel like I'm willing to just Expanding Force here and Astral Barrage. Get the KO onto Mimikyu. And just make sure Trick Room doesn't go up. Because the thing is, Stack Attack is not bad into Calyrex, but the problem is, let's say I uh, just switch Calyrex out here. Like, yeah, I, it doesn't faint, but then they get Trick Room up. And then my stack, like, then you can just switch Instant out into um, Kali Ice and Self Shadow Sneak. Okay. So the main thing here is I, I, I'm, I just think Trick Room's really bad here, and I'm willing to trade Calyrex for Mimikyu turn one. Because Arcanine and Stack Attack actually means that, assuming their last two are Rillaboom and Calyrex Ice, it's actually not terrible for us. Because I can bring in Arcanine first. This Arcanine also has close combat. 
Decent damage with Astro Barrage on Tinsen, honestly, so I'll take it. Because the thing is, here, I think I'll just pivot Arcanine in this next turn. And if for some reason they didn't go for a Dark type attack on a Calyrex, we're in amazing shape. But it should be like a Darkest Lair Eater or a Throw Trop. Yep. That's fine. We were always going to have to make a trade on turn one. That is the downside of Calyrex, though, right? It is very weak into the most common support Pokemon in the format, basically. So now you either bring in Kali or Rillaboom. I think Arcanine's always the right play because it guarantees us Intimidate onto either. I wonder if Dazzling Gleam was the play there, just so we could chip away more. We're gonna bring Calyrex up. Fine by me. Uh, I really don't want to Flare Blitz Calyrex. I think the play here is to switch NDD out into stack. That gives us terrain control too, assuming they're going to want to switch out. And I honestly like close combating into Incineroar here. I don't know if it KOs is the problem. It's close. We'll see how bulky it is. I think it'll survive personally, but I'm not sure. Now if Calyrex sets up Trick Room, we've intimidated it, so it's not as scary. And then if Incense, uh, sorry, if Arcanine survives this turn, I can pivot it out and then back in again as well. Cali protecting here would be super awesome to see. Nice. That's very good for us. That is really good. Okay. Let's see if close combat one shots here. I don't think so, but I need to I need to give you more credit, Arcanine. I actually used Bandit Arcanine for a while in 2017. Arcanine was one of my favorite Pokemon back then. And then, yeah, I mean close combat was obviously a staple on that. Was that on my Portland team? I think it was. One Lele Metagross. My Lodic is my opponent's last one. Uh, that is a little bit scary, honestly. Because the thing is, if I switch Arcanine out and then back in, I actually activate competitive. I was expecting Rillaboom, so they made a good choice bringing in that uh, my Lodic. It was actually really dangerous. If they just brought my Lodic in first over Calyrex Ice, this actually probably would have just been a lost game already. Now you can Scald and like Glacial Lance. Uh, I'm opting for Rock Slide and Protect here. Because I, it's fine if I activate your weakness policy if it means that, um, cause then Arcanine can just maybe KO you. Although I guess Kali does have Protect. Hmm. It's Coil, okay. That's a little bit scary. Yeah, they high horsepower into. Oh, they actually targeted stack attack and we dodge. Uh, that is a really lucky dodge, obviously. That's policy, yeah. Uh, I was actually. Yeah, my Milo is the last one. It's a really good decision by my opponent. If that high horsepower hits, I don't know if you one shot is the thing, because you are in. Uh, oh, sorry, you're not into me. No, that, that, that definitely one shots, right? Yeah, that actually... I, I feel like they probably would have won if that didn't miss. Now, if you're my opponent, you protect Calyrex, I think, and then you just target Arcanine with a Water-type attack. They could read into the switch as well. I think I have to switch Arcanine out here. That coil, I think, yeah, Milo wins them this game. They conserved it really nicely. Because if Rillaboom were my opponent's last one, which I was fully expecting for, for them to maintain control of the terrain, I think this was pretty one. So great Pokemon decision on their end. Yeah, Kali does go for Protect. Best case here is they actually knock out the Calyrex rather than go for Scald onto Arcanine. There's really no reason to, yeah, go for that play. Scald doesn't do much to NDG though, which is nice. This is like the one time where like you could see like Calyrex fits kind of awkwardly in with the team. Um, oh, I have Scarf Trick right now. Wait, that's actually really sick, right? No, but it doesn't, it's not like it locks them into Protect here, right? Last turn of Psychic Terrain, Expanding Force. High horsepower on a stack attack is pretty likely. 
I have to give up stack here. I need to expand your force because I need damage onto Milo. Yeah, I think this is probably GG. I couldn't figure out a way to deny Trick Room and... I probably should have just led stack attack, honestly. That's probably the best bet. Okay, they're gonna skull in the stack, actually. Oh, that's interesting. Ah, oh, they Glacial Lance. I could have wide guarded there. Does this KO stack attack, actually? I'm not sure it does. Yeah, it doesn't. Create an ED, that's fine. This is really intense. Let's see if Rock Slide hits. But we were bailed out in this game to begin with with that high horsepower dodge. Yeah, I just gotta give them kudos because I didn't expect Milotic to come out in this game. Oh, Kali hangs on with the sliver. Oh, it's not good. Um, Wilderness disappears. I needed to expanding force there to target the Milotic though. Now I activate competitive, but like, I wonder if Scald even KOs Arcanine, to be honest. We are like max HP with Citrus. Milo didn't do as much as I expected into stack attack earlier. Hmm. Calrix protecting here is likely. Your best play, in my opinion, is to protect Calyrex and then Scald into stack attack. Uh. So good. Rock slide. Close combat into Milo Dick? No, I don't think that's the play. Is it a double protect? Oh, okay, that's fine. Wait. Why would they double there? I feel like that actually gives us a huge window of opportunity. Uh, I think Milo probably still wins this endgame. Oh, I could have Trick Room there, right? E-Speed Trick Room? Because then my Calyrex is faster. And then I can just E-Speed Milotic and Rock Slide. I think Trick Room was the play there. Yeah, I missed it. I missed that. Dang. That's on me. I got a KO Calyrex here with E-Speed. So I guess the hope is that Arcanine takes a plus two skull, but it's probably pretty unlikely. Um, I do think Trick Room is correct here. So Trick Room and then E-Speed into Calyrex. This was a really fun game, but they honestly deserve to win given that they missed high horsepower. We wouldn't even be in this if the high horsepower miss didn't happen. Calyrex was just bulky enough to take this, those attacks, which is impressive. Scald. They do target Arcanine, that's what I needed. Not bulky enough to survive. Okay, so we're, we're basically hoping for a couple of rock slide flinches right now, I think. Had I Trick Roomed earlier, um, then what would have happened is I could have just gone E-Speed and Rock Slide, and uh, I'd get a defense boost and chip damage onto my Lodic. Although I think Milo with the leftovers and Protect probably would still end up winning, to be honest. The main thing here is just missing out that knockout onto Calyrex, but like I said, we were only in the game to begin with because of um, a dodge. But our win con here is just to flinch and then hope for a crit, I think. Yeah. Just really good decision to bring that Milotic. Um, how could I play this game better? I knew Instant Mimikyu was coming out, but even then it was still pretty hard. I guess I could lead stack Attacka because then I can just body press Instant to start off the game. But the problem is I get swept by Calyrex. I also could have wide guarded with stack Attacka earlier. Yeah, I think we need Rock Slide flinch into either two flinches or... In Actually, two flinches probably is just a win con here. No flinch. All right, GG. Well played, well played. I mean, I also switched out Arcanine that turn. Yeah, actually, I think the mistake was switching out Arcanine. Because Scald wasn't going to KO us in that position. All we needed to do was just stay in and then pressure the um, Calyrex with Flare Blitz, I think. I was just nervous because we had eaten the special defense drop, but I'm pretty sure, sure we would survive in retrospect. Yeah, we definitely would have survived. So that, that switch was kind of ill-advised. Um, huh. If 
I'm remembering the game correctly. Either way, yeah, that was nice execution by them. I think a lot of players would be tempted to bring Rillaboom into a matchup like that, and they very correctly identified to bring the Milotic. What were my other ones? Mian Shao, Whimsicott. I just don't have super effective damage into Milotic. My best answer is Calyrex. But it, I had to deny Trick Room. Um, so then the question is, did I have another lead to deny Trick Room? Oh, you know what it was? I could have gone Indy Stack. That would have been pretty interesting. Either way, next game in and we got Zashi in here. Um, we got Rillaboom, which is pretty cool. And another Milotic. Okay. Milotic is a really common partner now with Zashian, yeah. Because obviously everyone wants to intimidate Zashian. And Insin is, you know, the best answer, typically. I like setting up Tailwind here with Whimsicott. Um... It feels weird to not bring Arc. I feel like I should still bring Arcanine. But I just struggled so much against my low take. This time around, though, I don't think Calyrex gets threatened as much by a one-shot, for example. So I, I like Mianxiao plus Wim here with NDD and Kali in the back, I think. I think the main thing that's tricky about playing with Calyrex Shadow Rider teams is that you just run into so many Pokemon that can one-shot you. A single Dark or Ghost type attack on any- like Shadow Ball or NDD. Uh, you know, Dark type attack on Incineroar. Both of those are really scary. I didn't need to switch Arcanine out in the last game, yeah, because I also, like, they scalded into the NDD there. I'm pretty sure Arcanine would have survived. Yeah, like, we had a drop, but we're bulky Arcanine, so I think I just read a little too hard into that turn specifically. They're going to go with Incineroar plus Zacian. That's okay with me. Um, turn one, we can fake out Zacian. I have Akaberry on Whimsicott, so I actually don't even need to worry about um, Flare Blitz. I'd actually be pretty fine with Flare Blitz. And I want to stagger Tailwind, so Moonblast into Insin here and Fake Out into Zacian I think is fine. The main thing is we want to eliminate Incineroar. Like, one thing that's so key and that I didn't really get to do in that last game is, like, if you can eliminate the Dark type or, you know, the, like, the NDD. NDD and Insin are, like, the two Pokemon you're often aiming to eliminate early on um, because if you do that... If you do that, then it paves the way for Calyrex to just spam Expanding Force. So here I'm only going to just Tailwind in close combat. Uh, you can't pick up a double knockout here because of the Focus Ash on uh, the Mian Shao, which is really nice. Yeah, I think in that last game, though, the play was to just KO Kali. Am I, I'm remembering correctly, right? Rock Slide happened... Okay, they switch instant out. Makes sense. Into my low tick. Okay, that's fine by me. What's really critical is now you don't have your Pokemon that typically resists Astro Barrage. Ideally, Zacian just KOs Whimsicott here. Yes, really good damage from CC, by the way. Despite the Intimidate. Sub? No, Behemoth Blade. Perfect. I mean, if you're going for Whimsicott, this is beautiful. Mian Shao is a better target for them in this position. But they go for Whimsicott. This is like, couldn't have played out any better, right? Because it's like, okay, why not I just bring in Calyrex? And uh, yeah, just click Astro Barrage in close combat into Zacian. Unless that doesn't KO Zacian, but I don't know, Life Orb plus the close combat, I think it should be enough. Okay. Yep, it's just Astral Barrage. And close combat. I mean, some Zacians do have a lot of bulk, right? Like, the Zacian rank number one team we had used previously at max HP. Zacian. It's hard to gauge how much bulk it has just from fake out damage. Close combat should do like. Uh, actually, Milo switching back out into Insin is the play here. Yeah. My play then was what? I guess I could have protected. Close combated. Well, let's see how much this does. What am I saying? I'm not intimidated. <laughs> Inner focus. It's late. <laughs> Then it should be a KO, right? Oh no, that's bulky enough. Oh jeez. Right? Is it bulky enough? No, never mind. Ah, Mian Shell is actually so good on this team. Close combat's damage output like always does more than I expect it to. <laughs> okay. Mian Shell's just such a nice Incineroar counter because you can't intimidate us. Rillaboom's their last one, perfect. Uh, one thing to respect right now is going to be the... 
I always like inner focus just has two amazing side effects. <laughs> it's funny to not remember one or both. Uh, we have a lot of options here. I think the play I like most is switching this out into NDD. That gains terrain control for us. And then just close combat into Incineroar. Yeah, I think that puts us in a pretty good position. Um, what do you do if you're my opponent here, I guess, is the tricky thing. Glide. You could glide. I mean, getting terrain control up here is really nice, and if we knock out Incineroar, this game should just be over. Um, but yeah. I'll even go for Fake Out. Sick. Nice. That should win us the game, then, I would think. This Mian Shell is so good. Oh my goodness. It's so good. It actually fits the team so well. Like, inability to get intimidated in close combat just does so much damage into all the right things, right? Perfect. Now the main thing is, yeah, we eliminated the Incineroar. Okay, then maybe I could have just let Mian Shell. Like, if I let Mian Shell stack attacking in game two, I can just close combat your Incineroar turn one. And then potentially reverse your trick room. Eh, I guess the question there is like still where do we go from there afterwards? Either way, you can just expand your force here, close combat into my I, I gotta say, I'm really impressed by Mian Shell and this team comp in general. Very pleasantly pleased with it. So yeah. Let's play one more game though. And yeah, sorry, I, I feel like I definitely have misspoke a little bit uh, just while playing with the team. And then in game game two, I really do think it was just a big play to switch out the Arcanine. Don't know what I was thinking there. Okay, final match here, and it's another Zacian team. Okay. I miss Maractus right now. Come back to me. <laughs> uh, and no Milo here, but they have Galarian and Zapdos, so it's not surprising to see Zacian being paired with these Pokemon that can you know, take advantage of opposing Intimidates. Makes a lot of sense. Uh, however, this means that their answers, like, they don't have a single Ghost Resist, right? So, like, Calyrex just goes really hard here, which is super nice. But, uh, AV Rillaboom with Knockoff is obviously one thing to watch out for. So, I want to be careful about that. Um, I'm thinking we just go Whimsicott, Mianxiao. But then it's like, how do I fit Arcanine into the equation here? I could choose to not bring NDD, honestly. But it's like Expanding Force also just does well here. <laughs> hmm. I don't know, Arcanine is just so good into Zacian and Rillaboom. I guess I could go Arcanine plus Whimsicott, but then I fear the Zapdos lead. You know what? I'm gonna give Arcanine and Whimsicott a shot here. Because the thing is, even if they go with Zapdos, Zapdos just hard loses to NDD plus Calyrex. The main thing in this game was like, I wanted to bring in Arcanine, but I don't want to have it in the back because I don't want to lead Whimsicott Calyrex or Whimsicott uh, NDD because uh, Rillaboom counters both NDD and Calyrex here. I think lead matchups in general with this team can be tricky. Um, and that takes a little bit to get the hang of, but yeah. So we don't see the... This is actually still a really good lead for them, though, because, yeah, like, I'm not pressuring with Whimsicott at all right now. Whim, uh, on it, yeah, Whim plus Calyrex would have demolished this. If you're going with these two, obviously you have Zacian in the back. I would guess Zacian and Rillaboom are the back two. Kind of down just Tailwind here, honestly. And Protect right now. I guess there's a chance that they brought Whimsicott in the back, but I think Tailwind plus Protect turn one's really safe. Because then I just get a free switch in, right? And then we can go from there. And I'll probably just bring out Calyrex and just Astral Barrage, E-Speed. Go for Electro Web, that's fine. One thing to watch out for here is them webbing into Calyrex, but that's okay. Actually, with webs, man, webs is kind of scary, honestly. Uh, okay, they actually earth power. That's actually really good for us, right? Because I can just Moonblast Lando now and Flare Blitz it. Now, maybe they protect Landorus so I could target the Aleki. But I'm fine pressuring Lando right now. Even if they protect Lando, it's not that bad for us. 
I don't what I don't want to do is just give up Landorus for free. Yeah, they actually just Electro Web. But unless your Scarf Landorus here, like Whimsicott, should still outspeed Lando because we're max speed. So this double up should just pick up the knockout onto Landorus. That means the biggest threat to Arcanine is now out of the way. Okay, so there's that Moonblast. Wait, they are Choice Scarfed? Okay. Huh. I was not anticipating that. Um, interesting. Oh, well, that changes things. Wow. That's wild. Um, that changes the outcome of this so much, especially if they had Rillaboom and Zacian in the back. But that explains why they didn't protect, right? Okay. Uh, I'm gonna go protect Astral Barrage here. I know some people are using Scarf Lando Eye now, just not something I would have expected to see. Wait, what? Does their Arcanine just have no speed investment? That must be it, right? Yeah, there's Sash on Aleki. Another web. Okay. Wait, yeah, I, I'm sorry. I need to double check this. Like, what in the world? Oh, uh, it is just max HP, max attack. So no speed investment at minus one. We get outsped. Huh. Fascinating. Um... Well, another Electro Web here is likely, but Kali will still speed Lando. So we can just pick up a double KO here and then just Tailwind again. And they would draw Landorus. Rillaboom, maybe? That actually works for me. Because I can reg uh, regain control of the terrain, and once again, they don't have any Ghost Resists. Yeah. Should just double check the EB spreads there. But the thing is, now I get Astral Barrage, right? Like, yeah, you drop my speed by one. Oh, I get oh wow, that is so much into Rillaboom. They're not AV, are they? I feel like that should just win us the game then, honestly, because you're not a Salt Vest, because I assume Moonblast just KOs here. And if Moonblast KOs, then I just go Tailwind Astral Barrage next turn, and that should win us the game. Nice. Okay. Yeah, so... The main thing that I, yeah, just kind of forgot about was the fact that because there's no speed investment on Arcanine, then the Electro Web just drops us slower to relative to Lando Eye. But once again, they didn't have any Ghost Resists in this game, so even with that, we're actually still not in bad shape. Glad to have confirmed that, though. So Lando comes back in. It's obviously going to be Zacian. And I think we're really free to just Tailwind Astral Barrage here. Astro Barrage should do enough into Zacian, where then Helping Hand Expanding Force from ADD should finish things off. Now I'm at minus one, minus two, but with Tailwind, we're obviously still speeding, so yeah. Like, this was just my opponent not having a single Ghost Resist, and so it makes Zacian's matchup, or sorry, Calyrex's life so much easier, because you don't have anything that threatens the uh, Kali with the one-hit KO. Lando Protects here, that's fine. Um, I'm hoping that with the plus one Astro Barrage with Life Orb, Zacian is at like 20% or 20-30%, and then Scarf Indity can just come out, and then we can just click Helping Hand, um, Expanding Force for a double KO. Yeah, so the main thing I didn't expect here was the, the hang, yeah, the Pokemon hanging on with as much as they did. They actually just one-shot Zacian, oh my goodness. So, this is the perfect demonstration of how Caloric Shadow Rider can snowball, but... Yeah, a little bit sloppy of an episode for me on this end, uh, and I think game two, I definitely did not play that perfectly, but I just didn't know how to fully approach the Trick Room matchup, especially because that Mimikyu, you know, was going to have Shadow Sneak, and 
uh, as a quick terrain uh, mechanic reminder, you can actually, you can still shadow sneak yourself even if psychic terrain is up. So it's not like my psychic terrain just stops that. But this game was them just not having a single answer into Calyrex, honestly, especially without AB Rillaboom. Because if you're AB there, things change dramatically, but I just got a double knockout there. As soon as I get the double KO, yeah, there's nothing you can really do. So this is why it's really important to have a single ghost um, resistor immune. Otherwise, Calyrex really just gets to spam freely and, you know, have a good time. So, yeah. Definitely a nice string of games here. Uh, I think, you know, I'm definitely far from perfect with this team. And once again, I highly encourage you to watch the 25th Invitational Tournament to see how Ryota plays it because he's obviously the absolute master with this team. So, yeah. But it's a really fun team. I know we used Calyrex Shadow Rider earlier. That was kind of a different team, though, with Lele and, you know, Ditto. Uh, this team has that Mien Shell, which was really impressive today, as well as, you know, the Stack Attack, uh, the NDD Mail. Just a lot of fun stuff here. So, thank you so much, as always, for watching. Thanks to Ryota for the team. Details in the description below. Leave a like if you enjoy, and I'll catch you all next time. All right. Peace.